This is the Reverend Dr. Gilberto Rosado. Dios le bendiga. Este es Reverendo Dr. Gilberto Rosado. Welcoming you to another broadcast. At this hour, we have our bilingual um, broadcast, our teaching in English and Spanish. So we ask that you be patient as we translate live on the fly uh, between languages. Esta es la hora que damos la enseñanza en inglés y español y pedimos que tengas pues paciencia mientras que traduzcamos de un idioma al otro. Aproveche y aprende el otro idioma. While we're at it, you can learn the other language as, as well. Es un beneficio de sintonizarse con nuestro ministerio. It's a benefit, an added benefit, I should add, uh, of... Uh, tuning in to our ministry. God bless you all and welcome to our program today. Dios bendiga a todos. Bienvenido a nuestro programa de hoy. Today we're going to be talking about a, a, an issue of sexuality in the home. So this is the warning for parents who have little kiddies uh, around that they should be entertained elsewhere, actually. Um, I'm not going to show any images or anything like that. If you have not discussed things with your kids, um, then you should not have them watch this. So give them something to draw in another room, um, and which would be better for you today and for them. Um, <clears throat> hoy voy a hablar de temas de sexualidad en el hogar, así que no es apropiado para niños pequeños. Uh, dale algo para dibujar en otro cuarto, otro actividad en que se entretengan allá mientras que los adultos pues toman hoy su clase um, and uh, so that's the early warning I'm going to be making some introductions uh, some of the material today in the beginning so you have time to set things up for them uh, tiene tiempo ahora de hacerlo a preparar algo para ellos y mientras que hablo de otras uh, cosas como introducción <coughs> so um, Today's Palm Sunday, by the way. Uh, lo que no conocen hoy día es el día de las palmas. Uh, it's Palm Sunday because uh, Jesus Christ, it's the day Jesus Christ entered uh, Jerusalem or re-entered Jerusalem for the final time before his crucifixion. Um, and he came, he came, this is where you see all the stories. Este es el día de las palmas. Uh, y es cuando Jesús entró de, al fin, por la última vez a Jerusalén, cargando las palmas, digo, no cargando él, sino que él entró sobre un asno y el, el pueblo lo recibió con palmas en las manos, eh, simbolizando paz, right? En el, simbolizando el asno, simbolizaba paz. Pero la bienvenida con palmas es un símbolo de un rey que entra. Es una, un, ¿cómo se dice? Una salutación, un reconocimiento de rey, de rey. So we see that he is welcomed to Jerusalem with palms. It's a customary uh, welcoming of a, uh, of a king. Um, it's a recognition of his kingship. And he comes in, uh, but on a donkey, not on a horse. He did not come to conquer Jerusalem as a conqueror does. He came in peace. He came to bring peace. So Jesús vino a traer paz. Por eso no está en un caballo. Um, y eso es la, ese es la, el, el mensaje del Día de las Palmas, el Domingo de Palma. Uh, that's the messaging for uh, the Palm Sunday. Some people, my, even my wife, said, why aren't you talking about Palm Sunday today? And, and the simple uh, matter to it is that uh, that's not what the Lord has me to do. It's, you know that the Lord put us to um, talk about certain in, uh, topics 
uh, for this season. <clears throat> and I've been following through on that with the Lord previously. Um, we did the, um, the Bible from the beginning onward. Uh, we, we stopped around Exodus 23, if I'm not mistaken. And we had a pause. The Lord had me to go into topics for this time period. It just so happens that we're in this, uh, this emergency situation worldwide. You know, God knows what he's doing. I can't question it. To some people, it may not make any sense at all. But again, God's thinking is not man's thinking, right? So <laughs> there's nothing new for me So here on that. So we're continuing to be faithful to what the Lord put in uh, my hands to do uh, way back when. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and it, Bottom line, it really doesn't matter what's going on in the world today. Uh, the questions, the issues that we're dealing with are always here. With disease, without disease, with war, without war. Um, the questions that we're tackling in our weekly series are questions that are issues that are always affecting our families no matter what. So they're important then. They're, they're more important than anything else. Uh, if you want to hear about more corona, uh, corona stuff, there's other channels for that. If you want to hear sermons on the Palm Sunday, there's other channels and churches for that. Um, I, again, they've been doing that for years and years and generations and generations. And the population still has issues. Uh, this church is going to deal with these issues. That's what we're doing. Okay. So that's why God put it in our hearts to, to do this. And it just so happens now's the time. And the, the issue with the pandemic fits perfectly in what we're going to do. Very perfectly, believe it or not, in what we're going to talk about today. So, yeah, so you're going to hear something really interesting today and why this corona thing is the best thing. Yeah, you're going to quote me, put it on tweet, what Pastor said. This is the best thing to happen to families in generations. And we're going to talk about that, why that is in this teaching today. Hoy vamos a hablar algo muy serio. Eh, eh, no estamos hablando, no vamos a hablar de lo que hacen ustedes iglesia hoy día, que todo el mundo está hablando de Domingo de Palma uh, para el 1765 quinto vez. Eh, no vamos a estar dando, regalando palmas en las manos de a los santos, a los congregados, a los feligreses, nada de eso. Vamos a estar hablando hoy día de algo que impacta la sociedad generación tras generación tras generación mientras que los otros iglesias siguen su repetición de las cosas y, y la sociedad sigue en su eh, rumbo al, al, a la destrucción eh, nosotros vamos a cambiar la, la, las cosas aquí eh, a dirección del Espíritu Santo que me dijo que hiciera diferentes temas para este año, eso era antes de la enfermedad esta, antes del pandémico. Y eso es lo que me dijo, o sea, así lo estamos haciendo, así vamos a seguir hoy, la semana que viene y todo, seguimos así, um, haciendo las enseñanzas de, de eso índole, ya lo he, he hecho, están en, en línea en algún sitio y si no, no está porque estamos pidiendo ayuda para mantener las cosas en las nubes y nadie comparte, nadie quiere, pues no hay. So ahora no vaya buscando lo que no ayudaron para permanecer ni que se quedarse allí. So basically that's the way it's going to fall down. So. Así que es eh, como toda la vida, si no cuidamos las cosas, si no estamos manteniendo las cosas, no, no van a quedarse. That's it, you know, so that's the bottom line. Así que nosotros, pero lo, que, lo bueno es que este tema de hoy que vamos a hablar, eh, son cosas que aunque las iglesias estén hablando de sus días solemnes y esto lo otro, 
el, el, la humanidad sigue en su rumbo abajo. Y este tema de hoy, como los otros que hemos estado dando, son de vital importancia. Porque es, son los problemas que la sociedad tiene año tras año, década tras, y generación por generación por generación. So, esto es muy importante. Y además, este pandémico que está sucediendo ahorita es de vital importancia eh, con el tema de hoy es tan importante eh, porque tiene que ver eh, con el, el siguiente eh, punto que voy a hacer que es que es el mejor cosa que haya sucedido el pandémico que hay en el mundo es lo mejor que haya sucedido para la familia y eso lo voy a explicar hoy día el tema de hoy muy importante y lo que está pasando inmensísimamente de beneficio para la humanidad y esto es lo que vamos a, a, a revelar hoy día. So that's your headline there. How is the coronavirus of great benefit now to humanity, to the family? This is what we're going to be talking about today. So that's the headline. <laughs> All right, so I don't know where else in the world of now, now everyone's doing online church. We've been here for years doing online church. You know, people wonder, when are we going to have a church? When are we going to have a temple? Where, where, where would you be now? You know, <laughs> so hey, listen, the Lord always guided this ministry from the beginning. It will always be guided by the Lord to the end of time. And that's the bottom line. Nosotros hemos estado en línea dando clases en línea, iglesia en línea, no en templo, porque el templo, bueno, todo el mundo es, ¿dónde está el templo? Vamos a tener templo, esto es otro, pero ahora que qué, qué vamos a tener templo. Los que tienen templo, los que tienen templo grande, están vacías hoy día. Y ahora están haciendo lo que nosotros estamos haciendo. ¿eh? Yo estoy haciendo esto por años. Porque por años Dios nos está dirigiendo este ministerio. Nada de esto nos ha afectado. Gracias, Señor. No nos afecta. No hemos tenido que cambiar nada. Seguimos lo, siempre lo mismo. Esta iglesia como si nada ha pasado. Así que eso es la dirección del Espíritu Santo. Eso es la guianza del Espíritu Santo. Punto. De ser más, más, más claro no canta el gallo. Punto. Se terminó la discusión. Así que en, hoy, en este día vamos a hablar sobre unos puntos muy importantes afectando a la familia porque es preciso este momento para hacerlo. This is a game changer. What's happening right now is a game changer for families, for the human race right now. What's happening right now beyond the, the issue at hand, beyond the pandemic, It is the most important period of time for humanity to begin. It fosters a change. And so it gives us a help. You know, it's like, you know, when once everything is stripped away from you, like there's no more barriers for you to do something different, right? I don't know if anyone has gone through something like that in their lives before. Uh, muchas veces... Cuando perdemos todo, eh, entonces eh, crea o, o quita. Cuando perdemos todo, también perdemos eh, obstáculos a que nosotros ca eh, cambiemos o adoptemos nuevos modos o diferentes modos de hacer las cosas o diferentes cosas. Eh, algún trabajo, quizás nunca hemos pensado trabajar en un tal lugar antes, pero cuando no hay más nada, pues entonces uno no deja lo que quiere hacer, you know, lo que pensaba que podía hacer, y uno adopta otras cosas para hacer, para poder seguir hacia adelante. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure some of you have had the experience that maybe you never thought about a certain type of job, a certain type of career, and because of difficulties, maybe the Unemployment got high. I'm talking about before. Obviously, everyone's out of work, uh, basically, right now. 
But before, there, there were times of high unemployment and things like that, and people had difficulty finding employment. And so many people had to opt for a change in, to their resume. In other words, trying to get a job in something different that they never even thought about working in something like that. I, I'm sure if you've been, if you uh, have been old enough already, you've gone through that maybe once or twice in your life already, if not more. And right now, everyone's going to be facing that pretty much after this is all said and done, this pandemic. Así también en esta época, cuando, cuando se termina este, este asunto del pandémico, eh, mayormente muchos de ustedes van a estar en la misma cosa ahora, eh, en este mismo la decisión de hacer cosas que antes no pensaba que ibas a hacer en su vida o pensaba tratar otro tipo de trabajo, otro tipo de ocupación. Mucho, para muchos de ustedes van a empezar negocios después de esto. For many of you, you're going to you know, think about starting your own business after this. Uh, it may be the only thing you can do, maybe. Um, uh, some of you may have always thought of, you know, buying a big house in the city or something like that. And maybe after all this is over, you're going to start thinking, you know what? I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to buy something in the country where I can grow food. I can grow my own plants and, and my own salad and my own race as some animals so that no matter what happens out there in the world, I, my family and I will always have something to eat. So some of you may be changing your mindset, right? That that happens in times like these. En, en, esto, en, en estos tiempos, algunos, muchos de ustedes van a cambiar la idea. Uh, muchos, eh, muchos que pensaban comprar casa en, en la ciudad y tener su casita allí y vivir en, en la ciudad porque ahí está el trabajo, que esto otro, van a estar ahora pensando eh, quizás es mejor comprar en el campo y tener terreno para crecer y legumbres, ensalada, you know, eh, de fruta y tener animales que uno puede hacer matar y tener carne, aunque cuando no hay en las tiendas, cuando las cosas están malas, ¿no? Eso uno va a empezar a cambiar su forma de pensar sobre las cosas. Uh, eso es lo que crea estos momentos, ¿all right? So these are great times for that reason, because sometimes, many times, it makes us rethink. What are we doing? Okay. Algunas veces debe hacer que estas esta situaciones cambian nuestro modo de pensar. Y hacemos la pregunta, ¿qué estoy haciendo? ¿Qué, qué es lo más inteligente, la opción más inteligente para mi familia desde ahora en adelante? So, this is going to cause a lot of people to do some things they, they never thought they would be doing. It's going to rip away fantasies that a lot of people have. I'm talking about sexual ones. <laughs> I'm talking about just that you have this ideation of, yeah, I'm going to be in, in this place and we're going to make it here and we're gonna, I have my job. I'm going to be an executive here or I'm going to have this job or two jobs and I'm going to be doing X, Y, Z. Uh, some of you are already starting to see that the world is changing. Uh, things are going to have to change. Uh, so that's what's happening now in a lot of people's minds. So, hay gente que ahora están viendo como el mundo está cambiando. Y como el mundo está cambiando, va a necesitar cambiar también su perspectiva, su manera de ver las cosas, eh, la manera en que usted... Eh, te visione o eh, te ves en el futuro eh, en su posición, na, a, a, tomando una posición diferente en el futuro para acomodar un mejor bienestar uh, en su vida, aunque, eh, a, adaptándose pues a la realidad. I think right now what everyone's going through is a reality check. Lo que creo que la, lo que la mayoría de personas están pasando ahora es una, un chequeo de la realidad. 
antes estamos viviendo en una en un mundo eh, cómo se dice eh, inflado eh, eh, inflado y, y no real no no al grano de las cosas no de la realidad de la existencia eh, estamos cómodos en la ciudad, cómodo que la tienda siempre tiene papel de toile, cómodo en que las cosas andan uh, normalmente como estamos acostumbrados, solo para ver ahora en estos días la realidad de la vida. So a lot of us are experiencing for the first time, you know what, real life, this is it, this is raw, this is real life. This is what you've never seen before because un, until today, until these days, I should say, should say rather, uh, you've only lived a, a made-up world, a world that was prompted up, propped up by, you know, uh, modern facilities and, and Walmart and, and And, you know, a TV, right? And, and even the Internet. We're still being propped up by these things. Can you imagine what you would do without the Internet? Add on to what's going on, no Internet. Add on to what's going on, no, no electricity. <laughs> All right? So add on those two things. The two, two things that can be knocked out, you know, quickly. Eh, añade lo que está sucediendo ahora, la falta del internet, la falta del de teléfono celular, la falta de electricidad, Senc cosas sencillamente que pueden desaparecerse en un, en un segundo a otro. Th you know, think about these things. You know, your cell phone, I mean, all of you young folks with your cell phones, you know, you can easily lose, we can all lose as, as in the networks. Can, can be knocked out either naturally or by war. Things can happen. What would you do? And, and then we still have to deal with the pandemic. Everybody's looking at the, what do you call it, the, uh, what do you call this thing, the, um, the breathing system. What is that? Uh, the, uh, uh, everybody's been talking about it. I've been hearing it. I know the, the name, the, in, 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 what do you call that? You know, the breathing apparatus that they've been talking about, that they, they need more of these beds. The, uh, you know what it is. <laughs> Así que eh, mucha gente está están ahora en estos días hablando de esas aspiradores, ¿no? Esas camas especiales, ese equipo para ayudar a la gente que están sufriendo de este pandémico para que puedan respirar, ¿no? la, el equipo de respiración. So the, uh, entonces, imagínense si, si no hay electricidad y hasta cuándo van a los generadores va a estar trabajando. See, that's the, uh, one of the other things is that, you know, if we all lose the electric grid right now, what uses all these breathers or, uh, in, I, I, I can't read for the life of me when I'm trying to do something here. I can't get the name of this thing going. Um... It's a simple name, and you guys are yelling it at me out there. Aspirators, oh my goodness. What do they call? It's, um, I'm trying to find it through. Let's try to find it in the news. Un momento, que estoy buscando esta, este nombre de esta maquinaria. I've been watching, watching the news, and then another name escapes me. I'm sure it's, it's right. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. Oh, wow. Can you imagine that? Such a... But you know how I get, ustedes saben que hasta que no encuentro esa palabra. Ventilators, oh my goodness. <laughs> Los ventiladores que dicen, no sé si se, si se dice en español, pero son un equipo que ayuda a la persona a respirar. Ventilador, 
es la palabra en inglés, ventilated, en español no sé si se dice así o no. De todo modo, so these are ventilators, you know that everything, oh, we need the thousands of ventilators, the other guy needs the, this ventilator, that ventilator, uh, that amount, everybody seems to be, oh, we need the ventilators, we need the ventilators. And, uh, you know, anything can happen that can really make it all be silly overnight, you know, worthless, that you have all these ventilators uh, because something else went wrong, that now the ventilators, the, the lifespan of the ventilator, the, its use, uh, the ability for it to do it, what it needs to do, can be knocked down by uh, certain factors here and there. Um, este equipo que están buscando para ventilar los pulmones de las personas puede ser eh, incapacitado de una forma u otra con cualquier otro de estas emergencias que puede en cualquier momento suceder. You know, so things can get very difficult very quickly just by something else happening. And I said, both natural and man-made o man-caused. Esta, esta situación puede hacerse más exasperante, peor, con cualquier cosa natural que sucede o algo que el hombre haga que hace eh, la, con la situación peor que lo que está ahora. So again, people are looking at Right now, what you're seeing is really raw survival um, at the doorstep. It's not here yet, but it's very, it's, it's, it can be here with a, another push of something going wrong. Aquí estamos a la puerta de que, que de necesitar la, sobre, la sobrevivencia. Um, eh, vivir crudamente o, o tratar de sobrevivir crudamente so, simplemente con otra cosita, otra, otra pajita que caiga sobre el peso ya de este pandémico y causar a la humanidad entrar en una etapa de, de grande apuro. Um, so, and again, I'm not saying this to be an alarmist or anything. I'm just talking realities. I mean, that, that's what you come here to hear, the truth. So you're going to get the truth. And it's going to hurt. But this is the reality that you guys have to deal with. And that you are dealing with. Estas son las realidades que hay que estar pendiente de esto y es conocer que estas son cosas que pueden suceder. Just any little thing, a rock from heaven falls into the ocean as it's supposed to and uh, prophesied in the book of Revelation, and you have a major issue. You really do have a major, major, major issue. So you, you know, a lot of people are looking like this is the end of it. This is really how much more can we take? <laughs> Revelation tells you how much more you're going to take. But this is not it. This is, this is manageable. Esto es lo que está pasando con el pandémico ahora. El pandémico ahora es manejable. Es algo que el hombre puede... Eh, estamos quedándonos, quedándonos en la casa. Estamos, eh, you know, haciéndonos cómodos, separados uno al otro. Estamos haciendo cambios, ¿ok? So, eh, estamos adaptando a poder a, a esperar que este eh, virus se, se, se termine. So, son cosas que nosotros podemos hacer, pero si otra cosa más entra y, 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 des, y rompe, o sea, esto que estamos tratando de manejar, de, de controlar, esto va a ser un, no solamente tenemos pandémico, sino vamos a tener una pánica, un pánico eh, universal. Y eso es lo que va a matar mucha gente. Eso es peor, la complicación. So what's worse than what's happening now is possible. Any little straw, the straw that broke the camel's back. Because right now we're really at a point that if anything else 
comes to, you know, land on this supportive structure of, of management that we have now, it's going to break the camel's back. And what comes in, the floodwaters that will come in are going to be quite disruptive. That'll be, that'll totally tip the boat. And that's that, you know. Uh, so we, we are, we're looking, we're very sensitive right now. We're in very a careful place and a very precarious place right now. Estamos en un lugar muy precario, se dice, es muy, muy sensitivo. Y cualquier otra cosa que viene a, a, a mover esta embarcación va a ser destructor. Va a ser destructor. So even the president has been saying of uh, he said it from uh, early on, but now even more so that the country has to get back to work, and there's a reason why he's saying that. Eh, el presidente está aún ha estado hablando y diciendo y aún ahora más que antes que la nación tiene que volver a volver a sus trabajos, volver a reestablecerse. Por qué? Eh, why is that? Because we're getting to a point where uh, the and what he was saying that that the cure cannot be uh, more cannot cause more damage than the the sickness itself. So what is he saying by that? And he's saying that if the cure is going to the, the, the cure, if it right now that we have because we don't have a cure yet, so the cure is staying away from work, staying home, staying away, no productivity, nothing. So, but he's saying that what's the result of that is that the country will die. In, in other words, what, what, what made America great or what makes America work and, and be productive and everything function was that, you know, everyone went to work and everyone was producing and everything was normal. But if more time that things are not normal, then that ideal will die because if we will permanently lose I, I can't say permanently but we will drastically we will lose things that we needed in order to have maintain our stability god bless you dios le bendiga todo uh, así que si si se pierde más tiempo porque el presidente está pensando que si perdemos más tiempo sin ir a trabajar sin ir a tener los negocios abiertos eh, va a morir el, el, la nación en, en la forma que estuvo. Y vamos a tener que recrear la nación de nuevo. Okay? So what he's fearing and what he's alerting us to is that if this stays longer, we're going to actually, you know, people who had businesses, one, they're going to just walk away. And we were actually going to have to recreate um, the country. And uh, we won't have what we used to have. So this is debilitating. It's debilitating. Esta cosa, más tiempo que permanece, va a ser más y más debilitante para la, la nación. So basically, we're almost at a reset button type of moment. I'm, I'm going into the teaching right now. I'm bringing it in. <laughs> so ahora vamos a estar... Eh, estamos cerca a una, al botón de resetear, reboot. El president no want to hit that button. El presidente no quiere tocar ese botón de resetear las cosas. Um, de empezar, porque tenían que empezar de nuevo. No quiere, quiere seguir donde está, tuvimos. Uh, rebooting would mean that we lose our history. You know, we lose, you guys, I'm talking to you in computer terms. Excuse me, you know how that is when you have to like reformat the drive. You know, that's basically what's, what is a, the potentiality from this pandemic enduring um, and, and from our mitigation enduring, meaning that we stay home, we don't go to work. There is no work to go to. We're losing our jobs. We, businesses are being closed. That's done. And we're going to have to reboot. And that is devastating for, in, in comparison to what we had before, it's devastating. So esto va a ser devastante si tenemos que cerrar todos los negocios, los dueños ya fracasamos.
voy a hacer otra cosa, no sé qué vamos a hacer, pero no voy a poder volver. Uh, si, si eso sucede, eh, es muy devastador y el país, en la nación, tendrá que reincorporarse y recrecer, o sea, redesarrollarse. Y eso es, es bastante, bastante trabajo, el tiempo, etc. etc. So, again, that's what's happening there. So, I'm, I'm just giving you a national and, and global perspective of the times, of how close we are in having to, and everything being shifted and being reorganized. We're not going to get into the politics of it, if it was done on purpose, if that was an intended purpose to it, if it wasn't, it's just an accident, God's will, whatever it is, we're not going to go into that aspect. But I am going to go into the impact for our homes and our families because this is actually a the perfect moment to do in our family what we probably were not able or thinking about doing before for the good. So, entonces, ahora lo que surge que este momento que estamos pasando en el mundo y esa perspectiva global y nacional, no voy a entrar en la política, no voy a entrar en, en la, las conspiraciones, si fue a propósito y aquellos que están tratando de hacer más daño para que se reconstruya la nación de otra forma, cosas así, yo no, no voy a entrar en eso, en este, en este enseñanza, pero sí voy a enfocarme en la oportunidad ahora para cada familia resetearse para el bien de su familia, que estos son la, la, en los momentos precisos. Ok, so now we're going into, and hopefully all your children are doing something, of coloring nice butterflies and flowers someplace else. Uh, espero que todos los niños estén en otro lugar dibujando mariposita y florecita y cosas así y que no están oyendo ahora esta enseñanza so vamos a entrar en ella so we're going to go in there y voy a, es una continuación de lo que estamos hablando el otro domingo it's a continuation what we were talking about last Sunday and the previous Sundays um, in dealing with sexuality the issue of sexuality in the home vamos a estar hablando de eh, el asunto de la sexualidad en, la, en el hogar, los otros domingos estamos hablando de homosexual en la familia y otras, y otras cosas, cómo tratar las dos situaciones. So, what we have right now is a beautiful and wonderful opportunity to reset your family culture. Lo que tenemos ahora es una bellísima oportunidad de resetear la cultura familiar. What you're doing in your home. How you're raising your kids. Cómo está criando sus niños, la cultura familiar en su hogar. Ahora es el momento de imponer cambios. And I'm going to show you that all, you've already started doing it. It's just that now you, not, you, you need to realize it's the time to do everything now. Uh, usted quizá no está en, eh, viendo que ya ha, usted ha empezado a cambiar la cultura familiar en su hogar. La mayoría. Y simplemente vamos a añadir a ese cambio. Eso es lo que ya ha empezado. ¿Qué ha empezado ya? Pero primeramente, look at the things that's going on. Most of you, your kids aren't going to school. The, the normalcy of waking up in the morning, you know, brushing teeth, having uh, uh, some cereal, I'm talking general terms, running out the house to get the school bus, you know, they're there in school, they're not at home, you guys are working, then they come out, the school bus drives them home, and you got somebody picking up, or some neighbor, or your, yourself, you get back from work, and you go and pick them up. Well, that normal behavior and that normal system for most of the country and the world is no longer happening. So automatically, your family culture, a part of your family habits, 
have already changed. It's been forced. Ya ha cambiado su normalidad en, la, en el hogar. Ya los niños no están yendo de aquí. Tienen que estar en la casa. Eh, ha cambiado el sistema viejo de, de mandarlo, el bus, escuela, vuelven bus a la casa. Eh, you know, ese sistema, esa normalidad ya ha cambiado para la mayoría de personas. So ya su cultura familiar está ya eh, un poquito craqueado, o sea que ya hay una apertura a lo normal que los niños han aprendido. Uh, y se han conformado. So there's an aperture now, an opening, where in the standard day-to-day -day habits that your family and your children have been exposed to up to now, they've been raised in a certain way, and now we have this change. But because you have this forced change, it's the perfect, through that same opening, to begin to make vital changes in other areas of the family's d development as the one that we're talking about about today, sexuality, and a whole host of things like we were doing, the academic stuff that we did last week, I believe. Um, and we'll be doing in, in following weeks financial teachings also that you need to be teaching and doing for your children. There's marital things that can be addressed at this moment. Um, a lot of good things you can begin to address and start making changes because of what's happening now. It's a great opportunity. And most people, you know, you guys got to be looking at this and saying, you know, wow, you know, this is a, a great chance, an opportunity for to set things straight. Because a lot of people have been noticing that maybe they started off on the wrong foot. Maybe they made a few mistakes along the way. And, um, if only I had a chance to, you know, like, to redo and reset things the right way. Well, this is it. This is this is a gift. Right now, it's a gift. It's a gift because it's an opportunity for you to reset things into a better framework. You can recreate a better framework for your family right now. Ahora son los tiempos que usted puede recrear, reformar una, una eh, mejor eh, estructura para su familia a través de este cambios que han, hayan tenido ahora y este ambiente. So again, you have your kids for a longer period of time every day, right? So that means that you're able to instruct them more every day. You're also able to observe them more every day. They are able to observe you more every day. Aquí ahora los muchachos, usted lo puede instruir más horas todos los días. Usted lo puede observar más horas todos los días. Ellos, los niños, pueden observar a ti, a los padres, más todos los días. So es un tiempo muy bueno para que haya eh, cambios que quizá usted ha querido hacer, pero no ha visto la oportunidad, no ha tenido la oportunidad o no ve la manera, pero ahora es la manera, ahora se puede hacer. Now you can do it. Now's the time. Because it's just perfect time right now for it to be done. So this is, this is a wonderful moment. Uh, I, you know, I can tell you the origins of this, the bad uses of this. There are bad uses. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff in uh, a lot of the mental health area came from uh, bad use, uh, case studies, abuses of, of knowledge, and uh, testing in a negative format. Uh, and this is where mostly we, we get uh, the... Uh, the benefits uh, of that, those studies and those abuses in the past, now we got wisdom all of a sudden, right? So but basically it comes from a lot of testing, a lot of things that were done that now we no longer do, but we sure learned a lot from that. Um, nosotros antes, en, en tiempos anteriores, con la salud mental, la psicología, 
hicieron muchas pruebas que hoy día no se permite. Son, eran pruebas muy, eh, estudios muy, como se dice, no muy buenas, no muy agradables, pero se aprendió bastante. Y, y esa, esa ciencia, ese conocimiento es básicamente lo que se está usando ahora. Ahora lo que estoy hablando son cosas que se utiliza, que se puede utilizar en una mala manera. Lo han utilizado en malas maneras en otros ambientes, en otros momentos como guerra, prisioneros, etcétera, etcétera. Uh, pero surge que eh, también ellos cambian la vida, ¿no? Ellos cambiaron eh, la normalidad para los eh, soldados prisioneros, por ejemplo, y, y pudieron cambiarles la mente y hacer diferentes cosas porque su mundo se terminó como lo estaba diciendo al empezar este programa. So, yeah, you got to understand that, like in the past, one of the examples would be prisoners of war. Uh, their world changed. They, they became prisoners of war. They, they did all sorts of things uh, to these folks. Um, they changed their whole mental perspective and outlook, and they became malleable, the prisoners. And they were able to do a lot of things with these guys and change the way they look, even change their uh, loyalties, right? Uh, in, a, in a lot of cases, they were able to do that because of the change uh, of their normal life. And, and, and a lot of them may have lost hope that things would go back to normal, so they had nothing to hold on to. So then they were free to adapt or to adopt new things forced to do it because how there's nothing nothing else that we can do about it um so again yeah that has that negative connotation to it uh, etc etc but it doesn't mean that uh we don't use the that understanding that human psychology in shaping what we're to do for our lives and our children in the future that's basically you have you need to adapt You, there's things that need to change now anyway, right? You have to, they have to wash their hands more than you had instructed to wash their hands before, uh, for example. So now, right now, that thing's coming home, right? That teaching's coming home. Ahora mismo esa enseñanza de lavar las manos más está llegando a casa. En esta semana casi me muero. <laughs> This past week I almost died. All right, people say, oh, oh my goodness, coronavirus, this and that. No, 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 I don't got coronavirus. But I'm saying I was dying laughing. Yo estaba muriéndome de la risa. Why was that? Because I go into the bathroom. And again, I'm not doing my hand washing more than normal, you know. <laughs> But I usually always wash my hand anyway. I, So you, again, I'm adding to what I always do anyhow. I always, every time I go look at the bathroom, I'll go and wash my hands. You know, I use the bathroom. I go wash my hands. So I'm always washing my hands. I'm always brushing my teeth. If I'm in the bathroom, I brush my teeth again. That's all. I always do that. Yo siempre I, me meto en el baño para cualquier otra cosa y me lavo los dientes. I always do it. No, no es algo que yo, yo siempre he hecho eso. So if I'm in the bathroom, you know that I'm taking care of business, whatever that is, and I'm also brushing my teeth. I'm going to brush my teeth again. So I brush my teeth during the day, maybe five, six times, easy. And then again before I go to bed. So yo me lavo los dientes, por ejemplo, en este ejemplo, normalmente, Cinco o seis veces al día. Y cuando me voy a tirar a la cama, voy al baño una vez más. Hago vacío lo que tengo que vaciar y, y otra vez los dientes. So yo, I have the greatest teeth, nice white teeth, because I'm always, that thing is polished. Okay, and it's not that I have what you call, I, I, it's just automatic thing because there's times that I forget. Simply, it's true. Hay, tie hay tiempo que se me olvida, o hay tiempo que eh, tengo que eh, salir de la casa rápido, por ejemplo, y no, no puedo estar teniendo esa cosa que, you know, no me lava los dientes en un día o dos, o something like that. Some people do that. I don't know how you guys get through it like that. <laughs> Pero alguna, some, alguna gente sale de la casa y no han lavado los dientes, 
uh, cosas pasan en emergencia y no se ha lavado los lo dientes en dos días. Eso no, you know, yo no, eso no va a pasar conmigo. Yo a cualquier hora que salgo, ¿verdad? yo tengo un par de horas nomás que me lavé los dientes. Máximo. You know, so that's my regular normal thing. So normally I'm clean. Normalmente soy limpio en, en ese aspecto. So again, so then I go into the bathroom the other day. Yeah. But lo que nunca hice it is I said esto like I, I showed you the other day in, in another video. En otro en otro día estoy enseñando uno de los videos que habla de la de cómo protegerse de, de y preparar la cocina y cosas para sobrevivir. Entonces yo estoy enseñando también mira se debe hacer así. Yo nunca he hecho eso. You know this thing here with soap and water like that. That I never because I always do wash my hand regular like this. You know regular. Normally, normalmente me limpio la mano así, normalmente, y ya. Pero entonces como yo investigué un poco más, se debe, you know, meter así lo, la mano aquí, que es una, es la manera, I can't say yo nunca lo he hecho, es verdad que yo lo hice un, unas veces, porque eso es la manera del cirujano lavarse las manos. I can't say that I never did it before, because in truth I have. Um, because I learned that the surgeons, it's the way the surgeon washes his hands. Uh, es la manera que un cirujano lava las manos. So I have done it before just because I learned that, that the surgeon does that way back then. But it's not my normal way of washing hands. No es mi manera normal de lavar las manos. So anyway, I almost died laughing because I go there. Of course, I have this big mirror in the bathroom. Tengo ese espejo en, la, en el baño. Me meto en el baño. Solamente, mira, cogí la, el jabón y empecé a lavar la mano y empecé y entonces me miré. <laughs> so I take the soap and water and then I saw and I look at the, at the mirror in the bathroom and I just started laughing uncontrollably. I know you guys have laughed that way in your life. It's you cannot stop laughing. Your whole body is shaking. Your whole body is shaking. And you, you just keep laughing and laughing and you just want to die laughing right there. That happened to me this past week. I was up there and I said, you guys are losing your minds. Empecé a decir que perdiendo la mente. Yo te lava de mano y todo eso. So it was like, and it's the state of affairs. You know, you guys got to understand you. I know you guys are going through because you're hearing this, you're hearing that, <laughs> you know, and we're going through some of you guys, and I'm, I'm sad. I, I, I'm saddened for you guys that are suffering. Some of you guys are suffering through this, and, you know, I have people that I'm worried about myself. They're, they're you know, what, what are we, I'm, I'm bracing because there's nothing that more that we can do but brace ourselves. I, for your, those of you who have elderly uh, parents, and I'm elderly myself, I, you, know, I, you know, I don't expect anything. I just expect God's will to be done, simply. Yo espero la voluntad de Dios que se haga. Nosotros tenemos ancianos, padres. Yo soy considerado anciano. Estoy considerado en el grupo de peligro. I'm also part of that group, in that, that dangerous uh, group or susceptible group in this pandemic. God's will be done. There's, just, there's nothing else that we can do. Uh, except. Uh, and then. So again. So esto es, so that's how I almost, I almost died laughing. I almost died laughing. It was a good way to go. Right. But it just is. Again. It's because we're getting bombarded with so much of this. Uh, this uh, pandemic. And no toilet paper. And all that. It just, just creates this whole madness in our environment these days so anyway but that's the reality of the moment but it's a perfect time getting back to our discussion it's the perfect time to make changes just like, like i was saying it's a perfecto momento de hacer los cambios en el hogar en el, la cultura en el hogar these are times and uh, that you can sit down with your children um, have discussions, I mean, age-appropriate, of course, 
apropiado para su edad, usted ese tiempo apropiado ahora muy buena para sentarse y tener a hablar sobre cosas serias. It's a good time to start talking about serious things because it's serious times out there. Um, again, what you need to be doing right now with your kids is helping your kids live a, in a way that they will be protected most of the rest of their lives from catching any future thing. This and any future thing. This, this is the blessing of what's happening now. La bendición de lo que está sucediendo ahora es que ahora se puede inculcar en los muchachos, en los niños, un estilo de vida que promueve la protección personal para que en cualquier momento en el futuro haya otra enfermedad pandémica sus hijos serán los últimos en, en ser afectados. Right? That's the idea. The idea is that in the future, if any other pandemic occurs, that your children, your goal is that your children will be uh, the last ones, if ever, to catch that bug. Why? Because from this day on, from this pandemic on, they need to be... That's the way you wash hands. You don't wash your hands like that. It's like this. <laughs> Tú tienes que enseñar los, los muchachos. Ya esto no se, así no se lava la mano. Se le lava la mano así. And, and they need to stay with that. Oh, the, the coronavirus thing is over. We have the cure. Whatever. Two years passed. Remember five years ago. Remember 10 years ago when the pandemic, okay, I got to go wash my hands and that. That's what has to happen. Your kids have to always, from now on, wash their hands, pandemic or no pandemic, that way. They have to be like me. Wash your hand. Every time you pass by, you smell a toilet, wash your hand. Every time you, you think about toilet, bathroom, go. So, entonces, thank you all for joining us. Remember that if we break away, just reset your machine or we look for our stream. Uh, our stream should come back in. But sometimes notice in Facebook that whenever this happens, it starts another, another post. So just go look for the, the newer post. And continue uh, watching. Así que yo, yo sé que allá en, en Facebook eh, eh, la interrupción causa que otro, otro mensaje este, se establece y la vieja se queda ahí estoqueada. So, so salte y busca la nueva si, si esto empieza a pararse. But for Roku, I'm sorry, these guys on Roku don't get anything. We just got disconnected. And now our Roku people have been disconnected. So right now we're not on Roku live as far as I can ascertain. Um, there's a, whenever there's an interruption of this man or in the stream, it kind of knocks us out of the, um, out of the, the rebroadcast in Roku and Amazon, which is a sad thing. But anyway, I upload it later again to, to the archive in either case so it, the people can catch us later on there. All right, so it's now the time where you can reset the way they wash their hands and practically everything else. Ahora se puede resetear cómo lavan las manos, la frecuencia de lavar el momento de manos y otras cosas, all right? Now, if you have kids, I know there's some kids with mental issues right, that they talk about the truth. Hay que, uh, hay, hay niños que tienen problemas mentales y van a usar este lava, lavamiento de manos y otras cosas como puntos de resistir y de ser rebelde. Again, we're just teaching. Nosotros como padres solo podemos enseñar as parents, right? So as parents, we all need to teach. Uh, we, we show them where the water is. We can't force them to drink. 
So remember that as a parent, you can't force your kids. Como padres, tú no puedes forzar sus niños. Right? Um, you can make it extremely difficult for them to continue <laughs> without following through on what you instructed. That is always what you need to do anyway. But you can't force them to do it. But you have to just make it an easier to do what you said than to keep rebelling. You know, or on them, or less painful in terms of things they lose, things, their you know, privileges that they enjoyed, other things like that, then yes, obviously that's what you do for, to uh, motivate them to, to conform to your, um, your requests. Um, uh, usted tiene que proveerle la motivación muchas veces a niños que son rebeldes para que cumplan con el... El, la petición. It's basically a kid would have to be very hypocritical to disobey the parent. And I'll tell you why. Because for the same reason that they don't want to do something, it's the same reason that they have to reason that you are not going to let them to continue without doing what you wanted them to do. It's the same thing. So you have a right to do what you want to do. I have a right to not let you enjoy X, Y, Z until you do what I want you to do. So that's where we're at now, which, which is what you're going to want. You know, that's all. Because it's, if you don't do it, it doesn't hurt me. See, the, the thing is that you have to remove yourself from the equation. Usted tiene que sacarte de el problema. No es el problema contigo. Es el problema que si tú vas a hacer, recibir los beneficios que tú quieres, or no va a recibir los beneficios que tú quieres. That's it. That's a decision they have to make. You see? Es una decisión que ellos tienen que hacer. It has, you have nothing to do with it. You just know that if they don't, if they walk out of the house without an umbrella, they're going to get wet. That's all. Here's an umbrella. No, I don't want to use the umbrella. Let them get soaking wet. That's it. Simple. They get a cold. They get coronavirus. They drop dead. You know, it's sad, but that's what they wanted to do. You, as a parent, you need to, as the kids are growing up, you need to instill in them wisdom, you know, reason. If, if they grow up to be teenagers, they still don't get it. What you, you know, listen, continue doing what you need to do for yourself and your family, and they'll figure it out or die. And that's the bottom line. Uh, los niños tienen que ser instruidos en razonamiento mientras que están uh, tiernos. Después que se ponen grandes ya es muy tarde. Usted no tiene que reventarse los sesos. Porque están siendo rebeldes a sensibilidad, a razonamiento. Sencillamente, si no aprenden con lo bueno, ahora aprenden a lo malo. Punto, ya. Put on your happy face. And I'm sorry you're feeling that way. I'm sorry you're doing that. Because, you know, I, I taught you to better. I gave you the warnings. We instructed. We saw the people. They're done. You don't feel that that's going to happen to you? I hope it does. Okay, so let's move on. Now, so ese es el asunto. Usted no tiene que ser afectado, impactado, en forma negativa. It's simply, it is what it is. Simple, simple as can be. And also you're giving the mitigation that it's, it's somebody else. Also, if you have a mother and father, uh, maybe they, uh, the mother wasn't cooperative. Quizá la mamá no era cooperativa, no cooperó. And vice versa. Maybe the husband, the father didn't cooperate. Maybe the father's uh, invisible. It's not there. He left the house. A lot of problems occur, right? So again... But within the constraint of what you were doing, what you were able to do when they were young, we have what we have, and that's the end of the story. There's no need to blow a fuse at the teenager now. But this is not the teaching about teenagers. I think that's next week. So we're going to do that for next week. But in any case, it's, but the whole thing is the attitude that you take in terms of parenting. El, el asunto que estoy hablando es la actitud que uno toma como padre. 
eh, usted tiene la, la, el tiempo de moldear los niños cuando son tiernos. Ya después que se crece, madura, es muy tarde. Y para que uno esté explotándose los sesos, eh, eh, enojado, agregando la vida o, y el ambiente en el hogar. Porque eh, el cabezón que tiene de hijo, cabezona que tiene de hija, <risa> y en esa no es, 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 si es not the right time, no es el tiempo. Ya ese tiempo pasó. Punto. El momento de enseñar y suele cuando era niño, ahora es que pasan o fallan el grado. Punto. Y eso es para ellos y eso es en las manos de ellos. That's it. You know, ahora, again, you have your prerogatives. Tú tienes sus prerrogativos. Este es tu hogar. Esto este, este es mi casa. Aquí se hace lo que yo digo. Ahora tú quieres, como si estuviera hablando de un teenager, tú tienes de, de, de derecho, sus derechos en su casa. Cuando tú tienes tu hogar, ese derecho que tú estás hablando. Pero aquí el derecho lo tengo yo. See, if you're living under my roof, I'm the one with the right to do this or to do that. You have a right to live here if you follow and respect my rights to impose my rules in my own home. See, That is the way it works. This is your child had to learn that while they were little children. So that when they come up to be uh, young adults and thinking they know everything. Well, the one thing they have to remember that they know is that in dad's house, you do as dad tells you to do. Eh, lo que tienen que aprender estos hijos que saben mucho es que cuando están en casa de papá, tienen que hacer lo que papá manda, punto. Eso es lo que tienen que saber. Porque la única manera que tú vas a hacer lo que tú tienes que, lo que tú quieres hacer, es en tu propia casa, no en la casa de papá o de mamá. Si, when you want to do what you want to do, it's in your own home, not in my and pa's home. You don't have a right to do it in ma and pa's home. You have only the right to do what ma and pa says. That's it. So you have to understand that that's part of the agreement of staying with ma and pa. El punto del, 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 del el, el contrato de estar con mamá y papá. So again, I don't, the, these things I'm going to talk about, I, I'm not sure if it's next week or so, but one of the following weeks, we're going to talk about teens. We're going to talk to teenagers. So you have teens in your home, young people that live with you, mother and father. You want them to be watching that show when I do it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we have the show. We have upcoming for men. We have upcoming for women or wives, husbands, like that. And... Um, And stuff like that. So that's up, upcoming in, in the following uh, teachings uh, coming down. Uh, así que en los próximos eh, enseñanzas voy a estar hablando a los a lo, a lo docentes uh, a directamente a ellos. Enseñanza para ellos. Así tú lo haces que vean esa enseñanza. Eh, voy a estar hablando a maridos. Voy a estar hablando a esposas. Uh, etcétera, etcétera. Y diferentes, los diferentes partes de la familia. So, eh, en las próximas semanas, so, estar atento a eso. Pero hoy eh, estamos concentrándonos en aprovechando de estos cambios para hacer el cambio en la familia hacia un salud sexual en los miembros de la familia. So, we specifically want to go and focus now into the, uh, this developing a healthy sexual uh, comprehension and attitude in the home. Why is that? Because, like I was mentioning in the previous teachings, and uh, the ones on homosexuality, um, a part of the big problem is that parents don't talk about sexuality in the home. You consider it a taboo. Uh, la, la, el problema es que la mayoría de padres no hablan de sexualidad en la casa. 
uh, lo consideran algo uh, como tabú. No sé cómo decir eso en español, si se dice. Tabú que es algo que no se habla. Eso, no hablamos de esas cosas. Pero entonces, si tú no hablas de esas cosas, ¿quién? Porque están hablando de eso. ¿Quién es que va a hablar a sus hijos de esas cosas? See, if you don't want to talk about sexual things, some people say, what are you talking about sexual things on Palm Sunday? But the problem, the issue is, if we don't talk about it, who is? Who are we allowing to talk about? It? Because talking about it is what they do. So your kids are being exposed to sexual talk anyway. I only said for you to send your kids away, actually, because I know that most of you do not talk about sex in front of your kids. Lo, yo sé que ustedes no hablan de sexo a frente de sus hijos, y por eso le di el aviso que yo voy a hablar de sexo hoy, so mándalo para afuera, si tú quieres. ¿Sí? El padre, eh, ¿cómo se dice? El padre... Eh, a father que tiene, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the Roku, what I can do. Actually, stop the Roku and restart it. I just, I just thought of that, but I'll see if it, if it works or not. Usually it doesn't. Okay, so anyway, lo que pasa is, and I, I don't want to do anything else, because if I do something with the Roku other than trying to stop it as I did, And right now it's frozen. So I'm not going to do it because what happens is it'll shut down everything. So I don't want to do that. All right. So, and again, if that happens, I'll come back up. So that's all. Anyway. Así que si tumba la llamada, el video, voy a volver a iniciar, pero estoy tratando de prevenir eso. Roku está. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, Uh, como sé que ustedes no, no hablan de sexo a frente de sus hijos, porque ay, de mi hija no puedo oír esa cosa, pero eso, ustedes no están hablando a su hija esa cosa en la escuela todos los días. Todos los días le están enseñando cosas, fotos de, de, de sexo, de, de, de ruga grande y de ruga así, todo mojado, todo, whatever, todo tipo de suciedad. Tu hija lo está viendo. Deja ya la, la, la tontería. You know, stop being dumb. Your kids are seeing, you know, big pimples uh, all over the place, all wet and gooey and whatnot. They're, they're seeing this day in and day out. Big titty, big, yeah, like, oh, you <laughs> see, because The problem is that we are raising a society of immature, sexual, sexually immature adults. You're immature. Ustedes son, están desarrollando una sociedad eh, inmaduro sexual. Totally immature. Everybody's a oh, titty, titty, uh, titty. And, uh, you know, and then the girls, I, ima I, I can't imagine what the girls think, but I don't know. I don't know what you guys are looking at or even if you even look at that because I know the girls are a little more in terms of emotion and things like that. They're not visual. I know the guys were visual. You can notice that, right? Uh, los hombres son más visuales que las chicas. So no sé lo que las chicas te están imaginando o te están buscando. Pero están, están anhelando, están hablando, ay, me abrazó. I'm sure, I guess that's what the girls are talking about. I don't know, I'm not privy to these conversations. Ay, que me abrazó, me, me carició. I have to imagine that's what Ay, que lindo que me... Ah, oh, me sentí caliente, me sentí bien, me, me temblé todo y cosas. Y las mujeres están, ay, derritiendo. I, I guess so. I, yo tengo que imaginar que eso es así. You guys get women talking to each other, girls talking to each other. Oh, he rubbed me, he, he caressed me, and, and I'm kids, we hugged and kissed, and held, he held me tight. I shivered and all that. And you're talking all this. Uh, I'm sorry about the eroticism at this point, but again, I, we can't be mature sexually. My whole point is, see, these things happen, and things all, we've created this sexually immature society that... We can't help these kids. They're, they're victim to whatever happens in the school. Whoever does whatever in the school, the kids get exposed to their experiences. Because Lord knows, mother and father do not talk about this. They don't tell us about all this 
good stuff happening. We got to find this out on our own. See, that's what you guys are causing. Ustedes están causando que los niños eh, eh, vivencian, aprenden del sexo de cualquier amigo, amiga en la escuela. Eso es lo que tú estás diciendo, porque nosotros tenemos que ser santos. ¿vale? Los religiosos son peores en esto. Nosotros somos santos, somos gente de Dios. No podemos hablar de sexo. I can't, I can't get it. I, I don't get you guys. <laughs> you know, we're holy. We, we're children of God. We can't talk about sex. I mean, don't you hear the stupidity in that statement and that thought? Even that thought. Think about it. Before God gave man the Ten Commandments, he talked to them about sex. Antes que Dios le dio los diez mandamientos al hombre, le habló del sexo. You want me to prove it to you? <laughs> Quiere que te lo pruebe. Wait, wait, wait. Let's look at it here. Just, just so that you can, you know, that, you know, you can understand that this is not something that you need to be Immature about. Vamos, vamos a ir a Genesis 1. Let's go. People say, when is he going to get into the Bible? Right now. <laughs> Genesis 1. Look at it, the first chapter of the Bible. Y vamos a ver cuando Dios is hace el hombre. See? See? God made, so God created man in his own image. Dios creó el hombre en su imagen. In la imagen de Dios, in the image of God, created he him. He, him. Male and female created he them. Lo hizo hembra y varón y hembra. El 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. That means have sex like rabbits. Be, 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 be. Okay, aquí habla Dios de tener sexo, fructificar y multiplicar. You know, multiplication, here's your math. He even told them to, to multiply. He wasn't telling them to add one or two. He said multiplication, man, multiplication. Él dijo multiplicar, no sumar, multiplicar. Replenish the earth, the whole earth. You know how big the earth is? Try walking in it. God told them, replenish the earth. Tu camina, trata de caminar sobre la tierra, el redondo de la tierra, porque tú ves que Dios dijo, llena todo eso. Llena todo eso de qué? De, de, de niño. So, so how much more sexual can you get? ¿Qué más sexual puede usted imaginar que Dios está... Uh, ¿Dónde están los diez mandamientos? Éxodo 20. You know. So where are the Ten Commandments? They're in Exodus 20. Here he just created them. And él lo creó ahora mismo. And the first thing out of God's mouth is have sex. Have sex. Lo primero que Dios le dice a Adán y Eva, lo creo, dijo, tenga sexo, multiplica, mijo, multiplica. All right. So, again, you know, again, we, we can't be immature sexually. We need to be able to talk about these things. There's nothing wrong. Why, what is wrong with sex? ¿Qué, qué hay malo en el sexo? For goodness sakes. You create the good things that God has made, and you're making it bad. You're making it sinful to be fruitful and multiply. Está haciendo pecado eh, multiplicar y llenar la tierra. Es fue una bendición. When God is saying it's a blessing. See, that's, that's what's wrong with Bible folk. <laughs> Eso es lo que pasa con gente de la Biblia. Now, we're not talking about adultery, that's a sin. No estamos hablando de adulterio. No estamos hablando de fornicación. We're not talking about fornication, which is also a sin. Fornication is having sex outside of marriage. Okay, you're not married. You're not supposed to be multiplying. That's not the math that you do. Okay, simply, again, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what God said to do either. Okay, 
So obviously, that's not what we're saying here. And then oh, now some balloons got deflated. Oh, algunos, uh, algunas bolas, no bolas, <laughs> algunos eh, globos de, de la cosa se desinflaron ahora. All right. So again, but it also does does mean that sex is not something that shouldn't be talked about. So we have to we have to recognize that. The sexual desires there. Ay, tenemos que reconocer que lo que Dios hizo fue poner el deseo sexual en el hombre. Also understand the following. As you should know, you're, you're older. So you know, when did you start getting horny? Oh my goodness, on a Sunday. And Palm Sunday for that. Social norms. ¿Cuándo es que tú empezaste a sentirse sexualmente, cómo se dice... Sexualmente, um, uh, I want to say aroused, but I don't know the word in Spanish. Aroused. Quiere decir um, um, eh, con sentimiento sexual. Eh, ¿Cuándo es el más joven cuando tú tenías esos sentimientos como deseo sexual? Do you remember? You have to understand, look, look at nature. I'm going to say something that's controversial too. Voy a decir algo que es muy controversial también. When, do girl, when are girls able to get pregnant? ¿Cuándo es que las chicas pueden ser preñadas? ¿Cuándo pueden tener hijos las niñas? Esa es otra pregunta buena. It's a good question because you have to realize that God created the heavens and the earth. He created male and female. He created the female, right? And therefore, he created the time. He set the time when a female can begin to what? To replenish the earth, to be fruitful, to multiply. What is that age? But that's what you have to understand. Tengo que entender la edad. ¿Cuándo es que el varón puede ejacular, se dice? Puede emitir la esperma y hacer preñar una niña o una mujer. ¿Cuándo es que un, un niño, un varóncito, puede hacerlo? Porque entonces entienda que Dios hizo, cuando Dios hizo al hombre, Dios hizo el hombre para que cuando llega a cierta edad ya puede tener hijos. Porque hay que hacer qué? Frutificar y multiplicaos, llenar la tierra. Because you have to, a, a boy, a male child can, can have an ejaculation. He can uh, birth children. He can uh, make a, a girl pregnant. At what age? What age does that start happening? Because at that age, he's already under the blessing of God of being fruitful and filling the earth. He can do multiplication. <laughs> now everybody wants to do their math. <laughs> you hypocrites, you can't do math in school, but you want to do multiplication, huh? God's blessing, uh, multiple. I want to do God's blessed multiplication. <laughs> I got an A. I'm getting A's in that. I fail in math in school, but in that, I'm getting A's. <laughs> a baby here and a baby there. Ay, señor. No quieren hacer la matemática en la escuela, pero quieren multiplicar en la bendición de Dios aquí. Eso sí que quieren hacer. Eso, eso no, no falla nada. So, but th that's a good question, isn't it? Why did God make it that a girl can get pregnant? I don't know. Uh, I really haven't looked into what's the earliest a girl can get, but once they start having menstrual cycle. Cuando la niña empieza a tener su periodo, su, su costumbre eh, mensual, ya puede tener hijos. El, el costumbre mensual es que eh, ya murió un ovo, un ovo, no sé cómo decirlo en español tampoco, eh, ovo o ova o lo que sea, un huevo, ya, ya, ya perdió, por eso sangra. Ya podía haber tenido un niño, un hijo. 
de la manera que Dios creó las cosas. All right, because again, we're looking at things under social norms as opposed to what God created. Estamos viendo las cosas bajo eh, las normas sociales de la sociedad y no como Dios creó las cosas. So regardless, I, and I'm not saying that children should be having children. Yo no estoy hablando que los niños deben de estar teniendo niños. No es mi enseñanza. Pero hay que entender que ya a esa edad, ya las químicas en el, en el, en el cuerpo y la mente ya están funcionando. We have to understand that the chemical processes in the body are already at work. And that affects the mind. Because obviously there's a, an, an urging that's going to have, have to happen. And that's affecting, you know, decision making for the young lady, the young girl, and for the young man. Así que esas químicas que están en el cuerpo ya están obrando, afectando el, el joven de un modo u otro eh, sexualmente. Y eso es lo que está pasando. So you having, if your child, if your daughter is having menstrual period, and you're not discussing sex, sexuality and sex, there's something wrong. You are asking for trouble. Usted está pidiendo problemas si su hija está ya en su costumbre mensual y todavía no están hablando de la responsabilidad sexual. Y tienen que hablar. No, no, again, you haven't done it until now. Now is the perfect time. Ustedes no lo han hecho hasta ahora. Ahora es el, la hora perfecta. Ya sé. It's the perfect time for you. Um, the same thing with the male. The male, you have to... It, before he gets to this age, you need to be up in his business. Usted tiene que, como padre, estar en su negocio antes que llegue a los tiempos que se ponen activos. That's the importance of having a man in the house. Es muy importante tener un varón en la casa, un padre. Porque el padre va, mis hijos vienen a mí para cualquier problema que tienen. You know, my children come to me for any issue they're having. The male children, if they're having some, some uh, problem, and young children, sometimes they get infections. Uh, get an infection, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so they get infected. So they come to me. So I, I have to see what's happening. Does this need a doctor? Does it need uh, washing? Does it need uh, instruction and in how to bathe and how, what to do as a man? You know, man, men have to do things, you know, to make sure they stay clean. Stuff like that. El hombre tiene que enseñar los hijos cómo mantener su higiene, cómo limpiarse. Eh, los niños que tienen el prepucio. Uh, necesitan saber cómo eh, alar el propucio hacia atrás y dejar que el agua, no jabón, pero el, el agua eh, limpie eh, el pene, la cabecita y detrás del piel, del prepucio. So the male has to teach his son if he has, a, um, if he has the foreskin uh, how to pull it back and to wash with water no soap because the soap can irritate, but with water to make sure he's clean inside and beneath the skin if he has a foreskin. If they're circumcised, they don't have a problem. They won't have these issues as much as children or boys that have the foreskin. So again, these are things you know as a man. Um, those who don't, who have, were circumcised all your life, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you have foreskin, if your child has the skin around the head, the meters of the penis, they have to pull it back and to clean when they're getting up and in, in approaching the teenage, especially when they're getting uh, you know older, you see them, especially if they got an infection already as a young kid, uh, young infant, um, you need to be making sure that they that they when they bathe, that one of the things they do is pull back and you know, rinse. Uh, 
So una de las cosas que tienen que asegurar que el niño aprenda y que esté haciendo en, en, cuando se baña es con agua limpia, no con agua sucia, sino agua limpia a la alpa atrás y enjuagar. No se pone jabón, no se pone agua sucia, sino agua limpia eh, que se enjuague para que esté limpio. All right. Um, so these are things that, again, you, know, you have kids who are growing up in a uh, one-parent home. Uh, if they're male and they only have the mother, uh, some mothers don't know this. Algunos madres no saben que el hijo que tiene el prepucio tiene que limpiarse allí. Y so, algunos de los madres pues no, no van a enseñar al hijo. Esa, esa incomodidad de tener que estar bregando con el hijo y su parte es eh, privada. Pero como te digo, si, si no se hace, ¿quién lo va a hacer? Porque alguien tiene que hacerlo. Uh, puedes hablar como un remedio, puedes hablar con el doctor de los hijos cuando llega, cuando van a visitar. Doctor, por favor, eh, no tenemos, eh, eh, no tengo padre en la casa. Eh, el hijo tiene el prepucio. No sé cómo decirle cómo se limpia. Por favor, habla a él cómo se debe limpiar cuando se está bañando. So you can always... You know, tell your medical professional, the one who's checking up on your child, the primary care, uh, <clears throat> that uh, especially if they're male, that to instruct the child on proper cleaning of his member while they're in and checking for. Also, a good thing also the doctor should tell the, the patient is to check around the testicles, right? To, to, to feel the testicle that it is smooth. La otra cosa que deben de enseñar al niño es cómo tocarse los testículos para que el testículo esté, eh, para que sentir si el testículo mantiene su forma y que esté, you know, eh, como la, la forma que debe de tener, que no haya, you know, eh, lumps o algo creciendo en, en, en su testículo. So that's the thing to always check. Uh, que el niño aprenda temprano. No va a tener nada eh, a favor de Dios. Pero es bueno que ellos lo sepan mientras que están creciendo para que ya tú no lo tienen que hacer. Ya tiene un muchacho de 16, 17 años le tienen que estar enseñando cosas de su miembro. Ya debe, ya debe de ser un experto en su miembro en ese tiempo. No tienen que estar mirándolo. I see. So again, I, that's better done when they're young. Eh, es mejor que se hace cuando están jóvenes y niños todavía para que ya vayan creciendo con los hijos. Y tengo que chequearme los testículos ya que estoy aquí. <laughs> yeah, so that, now that they're there, they're standing there. Oh, let me check my, my testicles while I'm here. <laughs> so yeah, so they can have that already in their repertoire. The things they need to be checking on their own. And just sometimes the doctors tell them, but you just can't just assume. You have to make sure that they are being taught. Uh, usted tiene que asegurar que le están enseñando. Y, and also tell your child, did the doctor explain to you how to clean your, your member, your private area and all that? And they say, yeah, yeah, mommy. You know, I'm telling this because a lot of the women who are stuck with raising their kids and the male children alone so that you guys can know how to handle that. And let the child know that you know, that you, you talk to the doctor. So the doctor talked to you about because I asked him to, to make sure that you know how, how men take care of their machinery. You understand? So that the child knows that mom is, is, is looking out for me and she's, you know, she's taking care of my needs as a man, as a male growing up. You see that? So you, you're still not losing control. You, you're in control. Eh, usted como padre, si eres una madre sola, tú estás en control. El niño aprende, mamá está cuidando de mí, eh, de mi equipo de hombre, de mis cosas de hombre. Mi madre no es hombre, pero ella está cuidando eh, que, que me hablan, que me enseñan correctamente las cosas de hombre. You see? So that's important. Because especially if you have just a mother raising a male child, The male child needs to be able to know that, you know, Ma knows these things too. And she, she's careful that I get the instruction that I need. There's a point where the child realizes that, you know, Ma always made sure I knew about my stuff. 
even though they, I didn't have a father, my mother always made sure that uh, someone talked to me the right things, the good things about my things. So that's important. So that the, the child, again, why is that? Because the child needs to know that there's a right and there's a wrong. El niño tiene que saber que hay un bien y un mal. Hay una buena manera de hacer las cosas, de bregar con el asunto. Y hay mala manera de bregar con eso. So, again, uh, that gives the child decision-making space. Da al niño un espacio para hacer decisión. Because sin eso, el, el niño solo va a tener sus amigos. Y eso no es necesariamente bueno. So without that, you only have like friends in school. Now some of you, where did you learn sex from? A lot of you would say friends in school. Or my friends from the, from the hood. Muchos de ustedes aprendieron sexo de sus amigos en la escuela. O de sus amigos en su vecindario. No de su padre. That's a sad thing. That's a bad thing. It shouldn't be. No, no debe ser que aprenden de amigos de la escuela, que aprenden de sus amiguitos en el vecindario y no de sus padres. So eso es algo mal. Eh, el, el madre también sola debe de acudir a alguna persona responsable, to another responsible adult, someone you're sure about. You know, that you know this is a man. He's a man. He's not going to be, you know, doing something to my my son. So if you have somebody like that, it could be a brother. It could be uh, your father, you know, granddad. It could be one. But you're sure, you know, he's, he's going to tell my son the right thing. And he's not going to do something to my son. If you have somebody like that, um, you have to be careful. Don't make assumptions. Because it's always the, the majority of abuse comes from uncle, an uncle. La mayoría de abuso viene de un tío, a los niños, de la familia. So be careful. Be careful with your brothers. You, 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 if you don't know for sure where your brothers stand. Don't make an assumption. So again, only males that you know for sure. Okay, that are going to teach the child the right thing, responsible, then uh, you can also do that. The doctor also has a higher level of accountability, so that's why a doctor is, is pretty much more safer still, it's a step above. Uh, they have to be very careful because they got a lot of licenses and, and things that they have to worry about. Uh, so, you know, they're just going to maintain themselves Hopefully, in a professional man, doesn't mean it always happens. But I mean, you should. The, the doctor will always do this anyway in your presence. So always be in the presence, uh, in the room. You don't have to be there yet. You can turn your back so your son can feel less, maybe less inhibited. You're there, but you're there. Mom's there. She's looking in the other corner, and the doctor is dealing with me and talking with me. But then it's fine. Está bello también que el, 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 cuando está el doctor hablando a su hijo de cosas de hombre, que usted mira a, a la esquinita allí, usted, usted dobla, que el niño usted ve que está doblando la mirada para allá, y el doctor está hablando con su hijo, está bien, eso está bien, perfecto. Um, so things like that, and you can do that even with, with your father talking to your child. Um, and, and even with an uncle or whatever, that you're there. So you're not, you know, and again, uh, this comes with the teaching also that um, has to come into play now that you're talking about your children, about touching, who can touch you, how they touch you, you know, what's the purpose of touching? Doctor's going to touch. Doctor, when they're examining the male, he has to touch the, the testicles. He has to feel the testicles, you see, and he has to look at the penis. Then he can mirar al pene, tocarle pene. He, he puts his gloves on and he touches, he looks, and and other things like that. So um, again, but then there's there's a purpose to it. There's a, there's a medical reason for that, right? It's not. It's a medical examination. It's an examination medical. So no no hay nada sexual ahí. 
Uh, so, el niño tiene que entender esto es algo serio, eso no es juego, you know. So, again, that also helps the child to control themselves because sometimes whenever somebody's touching, even the doctor, they may get aroused. And they shouldn't feel embarrassed either about arousal. El niño tampoco debe sentirse mal de que se... Um, ¿Cómo decía eso en español? <laughs> Let me look for that in a minute. Uh, <clears throat> el niño, oh, excitar yo creo. El niño no debe ser, eh, sentirse avergonzado si, eh, si se pone excitado su miembro. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's exit. Um, uh, translate, let me get the translator. Uh, si se pone excitado. Las mujeres pues no tienen este problema. Los machos son los que, lo que demuestran afuera. Uh, que demuestran afuera su... Uh, dice aquí despertó, eso no es uh, it, it's, it's sexual, excitar, excitar. So yeah, so el niño, el jo, el varón es que demuestra su excitación. No lo puede esconder. Cuando está excitado, el miembro pues crece y se pone firme y, y, y se, como se dice, se para. Y entonces no debe sentirse que esto es algo malo, porque no es algo malo, es algo natural. So that's the other point I want to stress, out, stress for you guys, is that the child has to learn that these are natural things. These are things that God created, and these are natural things. They're not bad things. No son cosas malas. Son cosas naturales. Las cosas malas son fornicación, son adulterio. Son eh, acostarse con animales. Eso son cosas malas. Son, son terribles. Pero eh, lo natural se, de, del sexual, de los órganos sexuales, no es nada malo. There's nothing wrong in the, the organs, the uh, sexual organs. There's nothing wrong with arousal. It's a natural process. You know, we make everything a sin. And this is why I've been complaining about this since I got aroused. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. Since I started getting aroused, I was in church. And I always would say, why are they making this thing evil? ¿Por qué están haciendo esas cosas mal? Uh, malos. ¿Por qué? Then you have the folks. I'm sorry if I step on someone's feet. That you've done this, what I'm going to say, I'm not talking about you, but it's being, it, it's done all the time. They go up in furniture, they just had a baby. Okay, so the family just received, just had a new baby birth. Then they get up in church to testify. And then they say, oh, we thank God for giving us this child and blessing us with this child. And I'm looking at them and I say, you guys went to bed and did the monkey. What are you talking about God giving you this job? You did the work. <laughs> take the credit. Or take the blame. So, entonces, you know, yo siempre he visto a la gente testificando, oh, Dios nos dio este niño, este nos regaló un, un niño más, gracias a Dios, gloria a Dios. I say, usted hicieron el trabajo, dígalo, dígalo. I accept la culpabilidad. <laughs> so, I, yo siempre vi eso como una hipocresía. Yo entiendo que están hablando de, de que al fin Dios da, da la vida y todo. Yo, yo entiendo. Pero lo que estoy hablando es que los niños que están en la iglesia, de que yo era uno, nunca oímos del sexo. Lo único que, vi, que sabemos del sexo es que era malo. Pero entonces, ¿de dónde vienen estos niños? Oh, que Dios lo dio. Ah, entonces, I, there's always like this mysterious God giving of these children. And no one seems to be saying what we all know. You, y'all did the boogie woogie. Y'all, y'all had sex. Why don't we hear the truth of the matter? <laughs> that's what I, that's the way I was thinking in church. And you can see me as a little kid in church looking at this testimonial. 
and wondering why don't you just say that I enjoyed my wife, you know, nine months ago we got together and I really felt inspired. Let me say that. You know, get, tell us, you know, you know, don't hide the truth because it is hiding the truth. Just saying that God gave you, God gave you. Tell the truth. Let us be, you say, it's part of this, this, it, it looks like that you're hiding something, right? And you are, because you're not saying the truth, uh, you know, in its, in, in its raw sense. No está hablando la verdad en, en su forma cruda. Y entonces, ahí están escondiendo, están tapando lo que hicieron con decir que Dios nos bendijo con un niño. Entonces, en el que piensa como yo, no los demás, los demás son torpes, right? <laughs> but smart guys like me, we're not, we're not dopey. We're sitting there wondering. We're saying, you know, <laughs> something's missing here. Why are you not, like, why are you avoiding the topic at all costs? It's just like some people say, why are you talking about this as a Sunday teaching? Well, why shouldn't? I mean, God didn't wait too long. It's like the 27th, 28th verse in the first chapter of the Bible. He's talking about sex. He didn't held up anything. He's not hiding nothing. Uh, Dios no está escondiendo nada en el 28, eh, el 28 verso de la escritura, de su Torah. Habla de sexo, punto, ya. Yeah. You know? So, again... You're hiding the fact. Adults hide the fact. I grew up in a church hearing so many blessings of God. So many blessings of God. And not once did I hear people say, we had sex. I find my wife attractive enough to have sex with her all the time I can get. That I never heard in the church. Yo nunca oí en la iglesia que encuentro mi esposa tan bella, tan preciosa. Y me acuesto con ella todas las noches. Todas las noches y veces que, que puedo. Y no hemos tenido millones de niños porque sencillamente cada niño tarda nueve meses. Esa es la única razón. Porque si fuera para mí, why, why? you know, you don't hear the truth. I want to hear some truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's teach it, brother. Teach it. The truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Usted uh, oirá, eh, tendrá la verdad y la verdad os hará libre. Gloria, so let's preach it now, brother. See, but let's have some truth. And the reason I'm saying that I'm, I, 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 it's because because you guys hide it so much. Porque no se habla, se esconde tanto este tema de sexo en la familia y en la iglesia que los niños están eh, victimizados. They're like taking, like, they're exposed to anyone who wants to come in and chew them up. Están expuestos a cualquier cosa que venga y los mastica y lo destruye en lo sexual. It's the sexual thing. You wonder why teenagers don't stay in church. Sex. ¿Por qué no se quedan los niños, los jóvenes en la iglesia? El sexo. ¿Por qué se meten la pata? ¿Por qué no se habla, no se enseña? We don't teach them. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't show them sexuality in the church. Or in the home, so, you know, they got, hey, listen, they need sex. So they're going to go out and get some. Ellos necesitan sexo y van a salir a buscarlo. It, is, it, seems, it seems ridiculous that you expect anything else to happen. You know, suena ridículo que uno piensa que otra cosa va a suceder. That you see your child as what? If, if your child is normal, there's nothing wrong with them mentally. They're going to have sex. Si no hay nada, ningún problema mental, emocional de su niño, ellos van a tener sexo. Okay? Van a buscar sexo. Necesitan sexo. Lo que necesitan de ustedes, de la sociedad, de la iglesia, es instrucción, guianza. What they need is instruction and guidance from parents, from, uh, from the church. What is the guidance? What is the, what is the structure here? You know, what is right and what is wrong? Right? Sex is not wrong. It's, it's natural. Arousal uh, is natural. There's nothing wrong with it. Because when we start making these things wrong, we start making them hide, hide it. 
And all we're doing is we have kids, they may come with you to church, but they're having sex. And they, you are forcing them to sin because you're keeping everything hidden. Usted está causando los hijos pecar porque está manteniendo todo escondido. And you should never do that. Never do that. Because all you're doing is making them hide their sin. They're making them hide doing the thing and then they're sinning. Because they come to church, oh, praise God, and hallelujah. You're making them sin. Usted está causando que ellos pequen. They, you, they, they, they came, they did something, and they exploded in an orgasm, and all of a sudden, you make them lose their salvation because they had an orgasm. Uh, solo porque tu hijo tuvo un, un, un evento orgásmico, eh, climático, eh, la, la, esta semana, pues usted está haciendo que pierda su salvación. Porque eso es lo que piensa ahí. Hice esto, estoy pecando, perdí mi salvación. Eso es lo que tú, ustedes están causando en estos niños. Es su culpa que ellos dejan la iglesia porque se siente que están pecando. Ya están pecando. Se, se levantó los niños, el, el varón a veces se pone, a, se duerme y en la mañana ya salió el esperma o el pen. A través de la noche, el sueño, ya salió el esperma. Y ellos se ven, ay, yo he pecado. Yo estoy en pecado, yo no soy salvo. Si Cristo viene, vino por la noche, yo no fui porque tengo ese esperma aquí. Tú estás causando que el niño, yeah, yeah, so they have wet dreams. You know, males have wet dreams. You go to bed, the male, you know, and some of us are morning risers. You know what I'm talking about, you know, I, we do that. That's morning risers. And then during the night, you get wet. So, so you're going to make a young man think that they have lost their salvation Simply because this is a sin. I can't, I can't do this. I can't be, uh, I have this sperm here. This is not good. This is sinful. That's what they've been, you know, they always said people having sex and uh, having sperm. And that's a sinful thing. It's against God's law. Whatever, whatever the teaching is that you guys have been raising your kids up under. You guys make everything look like a sin, and, and they lost their salvation. So then what's stopping them? They, they've already lost their salvation. Why not go and have sex? Si ya han perdido la salvación, que ya se sienten que están sexual y ya se sienten así, pues ya yo, yo no estoy en la iglesia, pues yo estoy haciendo estas cosas. Yo estoy sintiendo estas cosas, so... Ya hay una menos eh, limitación, obstáculo a que abrió las piernas. See, but that is what you guys are causing because you guys don't talk. You guys don't communicate. Eh, no se está comunicando las cosas sexuales. Entonces el niño piensa y asume. And that again creates these issues. What you want to develop, lo que quiere desarrollar es que el niño tenga capacidad, sepa qué es el wet dream, qué es um, la eyaculación, la masturbación, qué es eh, lo sexual, las cosas sexuales, las diferentes opciones. Uh, que entienda lo que habla la Biblia, lo que dice y por qué, no religiosamente, sino, you know, y, y la ciencia, la biología. ¿Cómo es que usted vino a ser un ser viviente en esta tierra? Mamá y papá, punto. No hay otro mundo. So, tienen que entender los muchachos la realidad de la vida. So, again, you know, the children need to learn, you know, what ejaculation is, what wet dreams are, um, what masturbation is, what that all about. They need to understand what fornication is about, adultery, again, what God's word says about different things and how that impacts those other things. And then also biology. You know, how did you come to be alive? You came to be alive because mother and father. There's no other way for you to have become a living being. That's the way it is. Science. If you don't believe, even if you don't believe in God, it has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with science, biology. That's how we propagate. That's the way it is. So again, a, the child has to grow up with understanding the way it is. Esta es la manera que es. We're making everything, uh, you know, hidden and sinful. They're already sinning. So then every, all the sins, all the wrong things become vile. Because we already made the small things that were natural into sinful things. So therefore, 
they can sin. They've already started sinning. So then what's the difference between this sin and that other sin? See, that's what's happening a lot. Eso, lo que está pasando es que como ya tratamos las cosas como todo es pecado. Esto es pecado. So, se mojaron un poquito, se excitaron un poquito, pues ya están en pecado. Entonces todos los demás pecados ya pueden considerarlo porque ya están en pecado. So, it's like, what, what difference does it make? I'm already in sin. So then I can get, grab the door. I'm already in sin, so then I can, you know, I you know, I might as well just lay down with the same sex. I'm already, you know, sinning. I might as well do this because it's available. It's My friend is doing it. He invited me or she invited me. Um, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, whatever, my best friend. I'm already sinning. It is, what, what's stopping me from doing this? I'm already sinning. And the sad truth is, they weren't already sinning. It's just that you guys made it look like a sin. And that's the problem. That's what I'm trying to uh, eliminate and trying to correct. And right now, you have the chance of correcting that in your own, in your own home. Usted puede eliminar este problemica de que eh, el niño sienta que ya están en pecado porque se mojó, se excitó, lo que sea. Y entonces nada, no tiene refreno, no tiene ningún barrera a cualquier amigo, amiga, situación que venga a invitarlo a otros pecados porque ya está en pecado. ¿Sí? And I'm not saying that, and that, that then also introduces other things like taking drugs or smoking. So it may. Think some things are related, right? So some people learn to do other habits through sexual things and also other habits also open the door to sexuality as well so the, it can be interrelated depending the situation it's, it's different with everyone así que hay otras cosas que pueden suceder también eh, otros hábitos pueden introducir al niño a sexualidad como también la sexualidad puede abrir el niño a otras cosas malas como drogas y fumadera y otros hábitos malos. Depende en muchos factores. But one thing is for sure, for sure, that I know for sure is a major, uh, a major failure is when the family and when the church does not address sexuality appropriately. And that's a major failure. Um, and that includes even like, oh, we always talk about sex. We condemn it. That's also wrong. You have to talk. The natural things are natural. If your church isn't talking about natural things, being natural, then you're in the wrong place. That's obviously a bad teaching, erroneous teaching. They don't know how to deal. They're immature sexually. That's why they do that. Uh, I don't, I'm, you know, myself, the pastor is immature sexually. He don't know how to deal with it. And pastors like that are the ones having problems. And you see that you see a lot of pastors fall into some problem areas, right? But what but but when they were preaching and teaching, they were against it. That's a bad thing. That's a sin. That's a sin, but yeah, what happened? Yeah. See, because it's immaturity. It's, it's sexual immaturity is just simply wrong. La, la gente, los pastores que están hablando que esto es inmoral, esto es pecado. You know, ellos son los pastores que se meten en problemas. Bueno, entonces, ¿qué pasó? Ese pastor que estaba hablando tanto contra esto, contra el otro, ¿y, y dónde está? La, la inmadurez sexual es algo que mucha gente sufre y se ve en la iglesia. So you have churches that have this sexual immaturity as a mainstay in their theologies, in their doctrines. Natural things are natural things. See, so you're hearing here in this church, natural things are natural. Arousal, you have a, your penis is aroused as a natural thing, period. You know, you don't have to worry about it. Hey, pastor, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot in my in, in church. Yo he visto mucho en la iglesia. I've seen, I've seen kids get aroused. They've aroused. I don't know why, because I, I don't look that all too good. I think I do look great, but, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, then the people in the, that were in the church are not necessarily all that great. I guess it's in the eyes of the beholder. But I guess people, you know, 
some, sometimes it just it's just an an arousal, an arousal just inside. It's just an arousal. Sometimes the pants is causing it, or the the breeze underneath, or something is causing, or something that happened the other day, and you're still aroused. Uh, and so you have some people I've seen have problems in church sitting, uh, they're fidgety, or they're trying to cover up when we all stand up for prayer, and they're like they're bending over. You know, standing up to pray, bring, bring. No, you guys understand. Listen, you can talk. Nosotros pero dale lo que se paran y se quedan doblado así en la iglesia están excitados. Se excitaron por otra cosa anoche o otro día, algo que oyeron, algo que vieron. Vienen a la iglesia y el pantalón o la consuncillo, algo le está o la novia al otro lado o ahí sentado al lado. Whatever. It happens. It's natural. ¿Sí? Pero se siente que están en pecado. Que están pensando en la novia, que están en esto, otro, y eso es pecado. ¿Sí? So, again, this is what starts the thing rolling and then starts the rebellion against the things of God. Just because they had a natural moment. So, I think if people have to get more mature. They help the children get more mature by talking, discussing these things. Usted ayuda a los muchachos Ser más maduro hablando de esas cosas. You're not going to make more, more homosexuals with it. Usted no va a ser más homosexuales con eso. Ok. Ellos, el que se iba a ser homosexual, va a ser homosexual. Eh, el que va a ser heterosexual, va a ser heterosexual. Aunque se mete un poquito homosexual antes. A veces también tra eh, trabaja así. Ah, you know, porque se capacita. Y dice, no, no, no. Yo, esto, esto es un aguaje, esto es aguaje. Y entonces, I have my theory about where that word aguaje comes from. But anyway, that, I'll leave it that. You guys can think of it yourself. But then, uh, and then they get married and they settle down. Entonces se casan, se, ya tienen hijos. Yeah. Aprendieron, capacitaron. So again, but the church does a lot of damage when it doesn't discuss sex. The home does a lot of damage to kids when they don't discuss sex. You guys as parents need to be talking about sex. Los padres deben ser sexual. The parents should be sexual. Oh my goodness, yeah. But let your kids see you kiss your husband and, and your husband kiss you. Let, let them see you caressing. There's nothing wrong with that, right? No hay nada malo en eso. El, el hombre tiene que enseñar a los muchachos cómo ser hombre. Uh, the male of the home, the father, has to show his male children how to be a man. This is what it is to be a man. And this is what it is to be a, a loving husband to your, to your wife, which you respect by loving her and her alone, not by going around spreading your seed, being unfaithful and, and doing adultery. No, entonces hay que demostrar a los niños que papá ama a mamá. Se carician, se besan, se hablan románticamente, eh, hasta hacer chistes sexuales, se, se, se comparten. No es cosas que se debe en realidad esconder, son cosas naturales, son cosas eh, íntimas. Eh, no todo eso se debe esconder de los muchachos. No estoy hablando de tener sexo a frente de los muchachos. Eso no, aunque hay padres que lo han hecho. I know of a, of a couple that had sex while the kid was sleeping in the bedroom. I do not recommend that. You know, the kids are not sleeping in the bedroom, especially with all that racket going on. They're not sleeping. It's irresponsible for you to have sex when you have your child in your bedroom. They're not, they're not dead asleep. Don't imagine that. Because in one of those bouncings, the eyes open and see uh, and see dad pissing on mom. Okay? I know a, a true story. It wasn't piss, obviously, but you know, what does the kid know? All we know is that the kid started to piss on top of a, a, a figure, a stuffed doll, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the day somewhere. And the kid started humping a doll, or one of his stuff, uh, in the middle of the living room. Well, guests were there. I was the guest. So that was the show I got. And no one needed to tell me where he learned that from. I know where he learned that from. Again, yo vi hasta un niño 
estoy visitando una familia y ese niño empieza a brincar desnudo sobre una, una figura, ¿no? Y entonces, y, y entonces, y me, y me hace, como haciendo el acto que se está meando sobre. Y entonces nadie me tiene que explicar de dónde cogió eso. Yo sé de dónde lo cogió. Y no era meando. Él, él lo que vio no era, me, no era mearse. So, él, pero eso es lo que entienden porque es un niño, un infante. So, again, el niño no debe estar expuesto a esas cosas. So, again, you know, some of these parents are just, just I don't know. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, again, hay que hablar a los niños. I, la iglesia tiene que enseñar. You guys need to get an education. Over. Just simply there's natural things. That are natural. So get that straight. Deal with these issues with your kids. Talk frankly and openly. Hay que hablar francamente, abiertamente. Age appropriate. But don't get too much of the age appropriate. Because in school. Their friends don't care what age appropriate is. They don't know what that is. They're bringing the stuff out. And your kids are seeing that. They're exposed to it. So don't, you know, and then sometimes the kids say, oh, no, I don't want to talk about that. And then, no, 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 no. You're going to talk about that because I don't want to hear stories later on, right, that I don't want to talk about. So we're going to talk about this now. Nosotros vamos a hablar de eso. Algunos niños entonces empiezan a decir, ay, yo no quiero hablar de eso, yo no quiero hablar de eso, right, because esa es la mentalidad, ese es maduro. Pero ellos no dicen eso a los amigos. Lo, está, lo están chupando todo, literally. Pero no quieren hablar con los padres de eso porque eso lo quieren esconder. You know, they don't want to talk about that in the home because they want to hide that again, feeding into this whole lunacy of hiding the natural things. We're going to talk about that. You have to understand that there's like tribes in Africa where uh, and other places uh, in, um, in the Amazon The, the families are naked. La familia está en partes de África, en partes de, de la Amazona, en Brasil. La familia está desnuda. El padre tiene su miembro afuera o lo tiene amarrado con, con una, una pajita. Pero se le ve todos los miembros, todos la, los testículos. Yo conocí un, un, un varón que era descendiente, se crió en un tibu desnudo en, en, en la Amazon. I knew a gentleman uh, that was raised, he grew up as a, a naked tribesman in the Amazon jungle. I mean, I think those people who were in my church in Queens may have met him once. You may have met him because he, he would come, we would come and talk. Uh, we were working together some other project. That, that he was an Amazon Indian. Él era un, un, un indio de Amazonas. Quizás los que estuvieron conmigo en la, cuando teníamos la iglesia en la imprenta, quizás lo vieron una vez. Uh, era un varón blanquito. And so he was a white, white-faced, uh, white male. And he was raised, he, he, his family was a naked tribesman in Brazil. He was rescued or... Yeah, he had to get rescued. Uh, long story, I won't waste the time because we're running out of time right now. But anyway, he grew up. He was then raised in, by a regular Catholic family, and he learned to put on clothes and, and keep it on. But that's a long story. But anyway, but that's what that's where he started from. Ellos no piensan sexualmente, aunque esté el miembro ahí y los testículos ahí abiertos. Lo las personas no son no tienen malicia sexual. See? So when, you know, in these tribes, uh, even this guy told me, you know, they never thought about sexuality and there was nobody walking around, you know, aroused. No, no había uh, macho uh, uh, caminando por ahí excitado. Ellos no, no tenían otro perspectivo de la sexualidad. So again, a lot of the problems that we're having in society is really, is really because we've created this space of, of so-called privacy, but it's really a sinful privacy. It's not even natural privacy. There's a thing called, it's natural. And it's fine that you have natural privacy. We want that in our society. But don't make it a sinful privacy, a privacy to sin. 
and to consider this sinful because it isn't. But the church has a way of making things sinful that aren't. La iglesia hace, tiene tendencia de hacer unas cosas sex, eh, sexual pecado cuando no lo es. Esas cosas, adulterio y fornicación es pecado. Pero eh, eh, las cosas naturales de ser excitado, eh, el pene que se le excita, que se le crece, no es pecado. Eh, la eyaculación no es pecado. You know, these things are not sinful that uh, like the male goes through, the women. I mean, if, you, if you're going to be thinking of fornication, that is a sin. Si va a estar pensando en fornicación, eso es pecado. Pero el hecho que el proceso natural del cuerpo no es pecado. But natural, the natural process of the, of the flesh, although the flesh in general is sinful, but the natural things are natural. These are things that are natural. Going to the bathroom is not sin. We have to do it. A male getting aroused is also as natural as taking a dump. Un hombre que se excita es tanto natural como eh, sentarse en la taza a evacuar el, el feco, right? a, a, a vaciarse. Es natural, uno es igual que el otro, tanto natural que el otro. So, to tie things up for now, um, it's the perfect time with all of this that's going on for you guys to start being clear and frank with your children. I mean, we're talking at these times, en estos momentos, perfecto para hablar a sus hijos, francamente de las cosas. Uh, la gente se está muriendo. There's a lot of people that are going to be dying this week. I'm talking, and this week, many more people are going to die and pass away more uh, have already uh, there's been a lot more and a lot more are going to happen so we have to deal with this that's what's going to be have to be frank and the same way that you're trying to teach your children how to be clean how to prevent them from catching anything etc cetera, etc cetera, now you need to also take care of these sexual matters as well so that they can also be protected um, and we're talking about protection too that's one of the things as they grow older Talk to them about protection. Yeah, well, we don't teach them to have sex. I know you don't. But teach them how to use a condom anyway. So that if they do, they're protected. Doesn't mean you're giving them a green light to do it. But if you're going to do it, you better be protected. Así que el hombre, ¿sabes? los muchachos, hay que enseñarles a ser protegidos. No, nosotros no enseñamos a los niños que tengan sexo. No deben estar teniendo. No deben. No deben de mentir. Pero mienten. So, eh, también enséñales protegerse. No, tú no estás dando permiso. Esto no quiere decir que yo te estoy dando permiso. Yo estoy, estoy diciendo que si en cualquier momento usted te encuentre en una situación, usted debe tener esto. That's it. That's what you're doing. Okay? It's not an invitation. You just tell them be protected. But it's there again. La decisión es de ellos. Tú no puedes salvar a tus hijos. You know, you cannot save your children. Only God saves them. They need to repent. Ellos necesitan arrepentirse. Okay? You can only, in natural, your natural responsibility is to teach them about the natural things and to, and, and on top of that, the extra is to protect themselves. Lo, lo natural hay que enseñarles. Usted es padre natural. Enseña a sus hijos de lo natural. Y sobre aquello, protegerse. That's your responsibility. Now, I'll finish today with another story about a, 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 a person in a church, and not the church I'm, I'm involved in, a different church altogether, came to me and asked me a question. They had a, an 18-year-old, a son, who just turned 18. He comes to me and he asks this question. Now, these are people, <laughs> supposedly Christian or religious, right? So they come to me and he asks me, you know, my son just turned 18. And in Ecuador, I'm going to tell you real stuff. I'm not going to say names or anything. But in Ecuador, we have a tradition um, 
of what we do when a, a male becomes 18. And I said, okay, so what is that? And he said, well, we take them to the brothels. In Ecuador, there's like little places in town, a section, a street, or an area, like a neighborhood, where the certain houses are just uh, brothels. They're women that they're just there, and they offer their services. And, um, and men go there, all the men go, politicians, everything. That's the place to go, and everything is discreet and whatnot, but that's the place to go, and, and that's that. And so now that my son is 18, I'm a Christian. See, if I wasn't a Christian, he tells me, I would have no issue. I would just take my child and, and take them there because that's what they did with me. When I became 18, my father took me there, and I had my first woman. So now... Uh, I'm wondering, as a Christian now, if I should take my son, 18, and take him so that he can be a man. And this, uh, again, esta es una historia real que me vin, vinieron a preguntar a mí de un varón cristiano. Me vino y me preguntó de otra iglesia, no de la iglesia mía. Uh, me preguntó si eh, el hijo de él, el 18, y en Ecuador, Tenían la costumbre, o quizá la familia de él o su, su, su zona, ¿no? Tenía la costumbre de llevar a los niños o a los machos. Cuando llegan los 18, los llevan a los prostíbulos, se dice. Y allí se, que tengan su primer mujer. Y esa es la introducción a ser hombre allá en Ecuador, por lo menos en su, en su, en su zona, ¿no? Um, entonces me preguntó o sea, ahora como cristiano yo tengo el problema que no sé qué hacer con mi hijo de Dios yo siento la responsabilidad de llevarle a un prostíbulo para que sea hombre you know? so he asked me that question él me preguntó esa pregunta and I said wow well, you know, esa, una cosa era cuando tú estabas en el mundo la, la gente del mundo hacen esta cosa pero recuerde que Um, you know, esta cosa, hay pecado, el pecado se llama fornicación, y eso es lo que eso es. See, that, what the, you're asking me is about a sin called fornication, which that is. That's not teaching your child how to be a man. Eso no es enseñando al hijo cómo ser un hombre. Eso es enseñando al niño pecado, la, el pecado de fornicación. That's simply teaching a child how to fornicate. See, so that, that's the difference there. So, um, again, these are questions people have. I mean, what are you supposed to tell an 18-year-old? And the answer to that is nothing, because you would have taught him when they were 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You would taught him already. You've talked to him. You've dealt with issues before. This, this, the guy gets to be 18, he should know his members His member, shouldn't have members, but his member, he should know responsibility. He should have learned responsibility because you taught him since a baby. Yo le enseñaba a niño desde niñez, desde su infancia, cómo ser responsable. No se puede enseñar a 18. Eh, tú has enseñado cómo juzgar el bien y el mal. No se espera hasta que se tenga 18 años. You're not going to wait till he's 18 to teach him what's the, the good, what's good and what's bad. You know, you, you have to have taught him already. 18, it's like way too late. El 18 es muy tarde para enseñar al niño cosas. Ya es un hombre. I always have taught my children here, 18, you guys are done. You guys are baked. You're out of the oven. And you guys should go on on your start, get your own home and do your own thing. And don't kick them out. Like, How are you going to say that? My wife says, and you you're kicking them out. I say, I'm not kicking them out. I'm just saying that if they want to fly, the window is open. Fly. They're 18. They can fly. Yo enseño mis niños que cuando llegan los 18, no lo estoy echando de la casa. Pero estoy diciendo que si quieren volar, vuelan. 
Eso, yo, yo, mi trabajo es para prepararse para que vuelva. 18, vuela. La sociedad, la ley, 18, vuela. Punto. So that's my style, that's the way I teach, and that's what I do. By the time my kids, the kids that I raise, get to be 18, they're ready to fly. So they're invited to fly the coop at 18. If they need to stay longer, welcome, you're our, our child. But remember, this is my house, not your house. It's my house. That's the, that's the rule. They all understand. The window's open. Or this is my house and my rules, punto. You, and you already know them, so don't violate them. Así que los niños conmigo crecen sabiendo que esta es mi casa, estas son mis reglas. 18, la ventana está abierta, vuela si quiere. Si no, esta es mi casa, estas son mis reglas. Ustedes ya lo conocen, punto. So there's no, here there's no mystery. My kid here, he's 22. He's still here, 22. He had four years already. He could have, he hasn't. But he also knows the rules. And he maintains it. And he's a blessing here. Es un gran bendición. Este muchacho aquí tiene 22 años. He's uh, just simply a blessing. We have nothing negative to say about him at all. Blessing, a complete blessing. He knows the rules. He follows it to this day. Okay? So that's respect. That's the way I raise him. And, but he also has good stock oh, as well. So that helps a lot. Right? So those who know him know that he was good. He didn't have a good, fortunate, you know, upbringing. But that he himself come, has a good stock in him. So. And great, great character. So that's what we have. And we worked on that. And that's perfect. Perfect. Así que hemos tenido una, un gran ejemplo en este muchacho. Y todos los muchachos aquí saben qué es lo bueno, qué es lo malo. Okay? And the, the 18 comes. They either fly or they slide with the rules that they know. They're here. They know what they are. They've been raised on it. Nothing changes. And that's it. So you agree until you go. And that's that. And that's okay. And we're okay with that. Again, there's no, there's nothing hidden here. There's no, and we've not hidden anything here. Nosotros no escondemos nada de ello. And I, when came, time came to teach, I taught. I did what I had to do as a man to make sure certain things were done right. Yo hice lo que tuve que hacer como hombre para asegurar que eh, las cosas se hagan correctamente como hombres. Aquí criando a varones, lo que he tenido aquí. So, yeah, the, yeah, the things are done to ensure that teaching is had. Las cosas se hacen para asegurar que la enseñanza se, eh, se, se comunica. And that's the other thing I want to say before I go is that, you know, when you guys are watching movies, which you always should do, watch movies with your kids. Um, and, and that's a good way to start introducing the things that we're talking about, like start talking about sexually. Watch a movie that's, you know, see the movies before that they're a little bit on the, you know, kissy, kissy side, caressing. Um, depending on the age of the child, you, want, you may want to lift that uh, restriction a little bit to elicit the discussion, to start talking about responsibility, about how to handle situations. Again, um, watching a movie is a good way for you to ease into a discussion. If that's when We have weekly meetings here, so we can talk about things regularly in our home every week. Right after this teaching, by the way, when I finish right now in these moments, Um, we're going to have a, uh, a snack, and right after that, we're going to have a family meeting. We're going to, we're going to be talking about the, the virus, the more things that have to be done, you know, the washi-washi, and we're going to talk about, the, you know, the things that we need to. But that's a good habit to have. Every home should have that. And then if you watch a movie and you want to talk about the sexual thing, you can talk about that. You, you, you and your, 
your and your wife and you as you live normally you shouldn't hide from your kids uh, intimacy because they need to learn how to handle intimacy with their wives not feel inhibited you're not going to have sex in front of them but kiss kiss hold your wife comfort your wife not in the sexual way but you know caress your wife um, be together with her and and your kids oh mommy's kissing daddy and all that yeah they're going to do that but again here comes the instruction that's okay this is natural for mommy and daddy to do not for you guys to do in school even though you see you other kids doing that they where is the you know you, you got to understand you need to start teaching um these are things that husband and wife do the what's happening in school there's no husband and wife there so that's something that you know what what's happening but that you feel you're going to feel a desire you have your boyfriend you have to go you have to deal with these things we're going to talk more about these things when i deal with the teenagers uh in a future teaching it could be as early as next week or in the following weeks i'll let you know um but we'll be dealing with those things and we have like mass of los adolescentes y sus cositas uh de noviazgo y todo eso cuando eh, entro en esos temas la semana que viene o otra semana le voy a vertir y pero de todo modo usan película usan película para introducir los temas y para hablar a sus hijos de esos temas and that's about everything we talk about academics you can deal with your kids on sexual things and sexuality you know the difference between sexual and sexuality right it's uh, homosexuality or heterosexuality you can deal with that using movies using tv shows right? especially today it's the only good thing about it because at least you can watch it with your kid together talk about it. so that's the only good saving grace about it is we can talk about it and you can see where your child falls and uh, and start working with the child from then on um and also reinforcing the the right things the biologically correct things because after all that's the purpose in life is really to to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth así que el propósito biológico de la raza humana es de fructificar y multiplicar y enchir la tierra llenar la tierra. So, se puede enfatizar a través de los días, no importando la sexualidad en sí de sus hijos, porque están todavía tratando de acomodarse. Uh, so these things can be done. Again, if anyone needs any particular help, I'm always available by private message here on Facebook or wherever you see me. Uh, communicate with us, communicate with the church. And, or some other uh, uh, person that is expressing things in a way that you like, that you agree with for your own family culture, and tap into those resources so that you can get that help or assistance in your home. Así que si tú oyes otra persona hablando, mi persona, comunícase con nosotros, o con cualquier otro que tú oyes que está hablando algo que está en armonía con su pensamiento familiar, con su cultura que quiere implementar en su familia o mantener, desarrollar, pues entonces comuníquense a esa persona para que contribuya algún recurso, alguna ayuda uh, para usted utilizar con su familia. Unfortunately, like I'm saying, you know, we're talking about 18 years worth of wisdom and application and trying to talk about in two hours. It's just not possible. We've gone over our time, but again, I want to express the main point of this is natural is natural deal with it. The family needs to deal with it and needs to take out of the equation that sin, which is not a sin, it's a natural thing, and start helping the kids deal health and health-wise, healthily, uh, with sexuality. Hay que ayudar a los muchachos con lo natural y eh, a empezar que los muchachos tengan un saludable perspectiva sobre las cosas naturales y así pueden entonces mejor acomodar su sexualidad y desarrollarse sexualmente naturalmente como se debe. Y creo que este es el momento clave con todo esto que está sucediendo y es muy necesario 
para la raza, para el futuro. It's a necessary thing, uh, a step for us to do as a society for our future generations. Now that we have this stop, stoppage going on, reset, now let's do it the right way. And I invite churches also to start the conversation and, and you and your home to at least in, 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 uh, what do you call it? initiate in your home the right things, the right discussions, and the right perspective. And just talk. Everyone can talk. Everyone has a right to talk without being judged or, or reprimanded. Or let, them, let people express themselves and let's help them. And that's what we you should be doing um, and developing reason. And that's what really should happen. And be mature sexually. A lot of people are so immature sexually. It's, it's sad. It's really sad. And, 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 and all, all you're doing is fortifying evil. You think you're being holy. You think that you are denouncing unholy things. But what you're doing is fortifying evil things. And you're making it easier for the devil to take your children and whisk them away into sexual immorality. That's all you're doing. If they think you're a saint, you're doing the things as God wants, and being religious, and that that's not what we talk about, we're not going to talk about that. That's a sin, that's the devil, go to the hell. But all that you're doing is making it easier and more fortified. You fortify more the position of the devil, because you're making it more possible que agarra a sus hijos a la inmoralidad sexual. Porque tú rehusas de reconocer y tratar lo natural como natural. Sencillamente ahí empecemos. No empecemos a, 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 a ¿cómo se dice? A, a excomunicar a nuestros hijos porque están excitados. Es cierto. All right. So we don't want to excommunicate our children because they're aroused. Let's quit that. Let's stop that. And let's deal with our children. They're, they're growing up. They're teenagers. We're going to do with this again when we do the teenager thing. They're almost adults, really. There's no time to be excommunicating them, uh, you know, chastise, chastising them uh, for things they didn't learn. And uh, you really have to stop that. Um, let's, let's deal with things, math and science, and let's move on. You love them or you don't. Let's do things the right way. Vamos a hacer las cosas bien hechas. Uh, y vamos a seguir hacia adelante. God bless you. Until next time. Wash your hands now. Everybody, go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Take care. As always, if you like what you see today or heard, uh, your contributions are always welcome. Thank you very much for them. And God uh, bless you and keep you. Until next time.